At the moment, the last dance portrayed Krauss nothing short of a villain responsible for breaking up what is considered to be the greatest team ever, as well as discredited Krauss's accomplishment as the Bulls GM since 1985. Even though he passed away in 2017, the legendary Chicago Bulls GM Jerry Krause posthumously managed to pull off what is possibly his most ingenious move, defending his and his team's legacy. So it was interesting to see that hours after the final two episodes of the documentary were aired and all of MJ's 10 cards were on the table, Krause suddenly re-emerged out of nowhere and eventually pulled out his last card. And folks, this one, the last one, was an ace. NBC sports journalist Casey Johnson recently began publishing a series of articles containing excerpts of Krause's unfinished and unpublished memoirs. In one of those articles published on May 16, 2020, just hours after the last two episodes of The Last Dance were aired, the author vividly explains the reasoning behind Krause's most questionable decision, to dismantle the 97-98 Chicago Bulls, the very team that won the NBA championships in 96, 97, and 98. One of the main arguments of The Last Dance from what we had seen over the last 10 weeks is that the 96-98 Chicago Bulls NBA championship winning team led by superstars Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen was able to win at least a couple of more rings in the years following 98. However, the latest excerpt from Krause's memoirs revealed the complex interdisciplinary reasoning behind the decision to dismantle that majestic team. In short, they got old. It might sound unbelievable, but in just a decade, from 1988 to 1998, the Chicago Bulls played a total of 177 NBA playoff games, which accounts for more than two full NBA regular seasons. In addition, the constant title runs were very costly in terms of the Bulls' positioning in the NBA draft. The team's last significant draft pick in the 90s was the European gem Tony Kukoc in the draft class of 1990. On the other hand, all of that information seemed insignificant to the fans and media alike, who were literally blinded over the years by the superhuman abilities of the Bulls, Batman and Robin, MJ and Pip. But in the fall of 98, the two were deep in their 30s, Michael Jordan was 35 and Pippen was 33. All of that was more than obvious to both Reinsdorf and Kraus, and so they were forced to make a business decision. But the catch was that they didn't want to do it all on their own. And so, in early July of 98, they set up a meeting in Rivestore's house and gathered around the group that featured all of the prominent names from within the Bulls organization. Jerry Reinsdorf, Jerry Krause, Assistant General Manager Jim Stack, Strength and Conditioning Coach Al Vermeil, VP of Finance Urban Mandel, and Assistant to the GM, Karen Schack. Put yourself in our shoes as we walk out of that room. What would you do? Did we break up a dynasty or is the dynasty breaking up of age natural attrition of NBA players with little time to recuperate and the salary cap rules that govern the game? Moreover, it became very apparent to the Bulls medical staff that starter power forward Dennis Rodman and center Luke Longley would be the first ones to potentially have substantial trouble with injuries very soon. Their opinion proved right as throughout the next two seasons, the Worm appeared in only 35 games combined with the Lakers and Mavs, while Longley lasted for another three NBA seasons with the Suns and the Knicks. Longley, as well as free agents Steve Kerr and Judd Bushler, were looking for a more lucrative deal. He was traded to the Suns where he signed a five-year contract, Kerr went to San Antonio, and Bushler to Detroit. All three received substantially better financial terms with their new teams. With the team's top interior players such as Rodman and Longley gone, and the team unable to sign a quality free agent over the summer of 98 due to the 98-99 NBA lockout, Reinsdorf and Krause had run out of the options in securing solid foundations for keeping the championship team alive. So even if MJ someway somehow managed to convince Phil Jackson to eventually come back from Montana, the 98-99 group would be significantly depleted at the inside positions. Then the likes of Jordan, Pippen and Kukoc would be reassigned to new harder duties. Duties outside of their natural positions, which would force them to sacrifice their bodies even more. It was apparent that potential injury risk was going through the roof. Can Michael continue his greatness without a center, power forward and possibly Pippen? Could Bill Russell, the greatest team player ever, have won without great players around him? No! Michael has said publicly that he will not play for a coach other than Phil. Phil has told us he's gone. What does Michael do? 
The breaking point of the unlikely rebuilding scenario for the Chicago Bulls came when Pippen's agent requested a sign and trade deal with the Houston Rockets. Reinsdorf and Krause immediately complied with the request as Pip wanted to test the market. With half of the team including Pippen, Rodman, Longley, Kerr and Bushler gone from Windy City, MJ would have a tough time in his mission of talking Phil Jackson into returning to coach the Bulls. Could we get Phil to coach without a proven center, power forward, probably Pippen, a basically new bench and crazy expectations that in Michael we trust can win without help? Not a chance. Eventually Jordan sliced his finger on a cigar cutter and was forced to retire on January 13th, 1999. When the lockout was over, I still couldn't talk Phil into coming back. And the thing is, Michael had cut his finger with a cigar cutter, so he couldn't have played. So what's all this talk about bringing everybody back when Michael couldn't have come back? According to the memoirs of Jerry Krause, that's the ultimate truth regarding the end of the Bulls dynasty. And it would make quite an interesting scenario for an additional 11th episode of The Last Dance. Let us know what you think guys. If you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like and consider subscribing to our channel for more great basketball content. Thank you for watching.